As soon as I saw these wee guys, I knew I had to have them. It's the Ironhead Squat Prospectors for Necromunda, and I just love these models. I can't explain how much I love them. So I painted them up immediately, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, I mostly used contrast for this colour scheme, so I primed them with Wraithbone Spray because that gives a really good surface for the contrast to go on. The first colour I used was Griffhound Orange. It gives a really dark orange, but don't worry, we're going to brighten that up later on. So I carefully applied that, trying not to get it in too many other surfaces, because if you've ever used contrast before, you'll know whatever it touches, it stains. Anything you touch with it is going to have to be touched up with Wraithbone before we go on to the next colour. That's about the only downside to contrast. Other than that, I think it's great. You want to be painting the whole torso, the legs from the knee down, and there's little circles on the side that you want to get to, and on the elbows, there's an elbow pad, and there's two wee circles on each side, so you want to get them. On his right arm, I chose to paint his gauntlet orange as well, so just be as careful as you can at this stage. The more careful you are, the less touch-up you have to do later on. Being a bit of a hypocrite, the next stage is get your wraith bone out and touch up all the bits that you've messed up on. There will be bits, don't worry. I did it quite a lot on this model, but if you just touch a wee bit of wraith bone unwatered down on top of it, then it'll cover it up fine and it'll be ready for the next contrast paint. The next contrast paint we want to grab is Space Wolves Grey, and any suggestions that this colour scheme is based on Bob the Builder are, well, they're pretty accurate actually. We're just going to cover the sleeves and the legs with Space Wolf Grey. Now, on some of the models there's rubber piping instead of sleeves, so on those models I've put uh, Black Templar contrast on those bits, and then highlighted them up with Mechanicus Standard Grey and Dawnstone, maybe even going up to Administratum Grey. So that's what I would do on those bits, but they aren't on this model. Next we'll tackle all the leather bits, and we'll use Snakebite Leather for that and that will be the boots, the belts, the pouches on the side, and the gloves. One coverage of snakebite leather gives a kind of yellowy look to it. That's not what we want, so we apply two coats, and it darkens it down a lot. It looks really good. It does seem like I'm going pretty fast here, but that's because these models were really quick to paint. It only took me probably about a day to paint them, and that is really unusual for me. We'll use Black Templar Contrast next, and that will be for all the metallic bits, plus there's a black undersuit that you can see peeking out at a few locations, so if there's any wraithbone left, just hit it with Black Templar. This big buckle on the front is going to be metallic, so I always find that Black Templar provides a really good base for metallics. If you put the silver directly onto wraithbone, it's all wishy-washy, it just doesn't go on correctly, so I always put Black Templar contrast down if I'm starting from a light base coat. So I also do that on parts of the gun as well, so that I can paint silver over that. You may have to get into a few tight nooks and crannies with Black Templar, so just make sure you've got a small enough brush. Try not to hit the orange, because it's very difficult to go back from that. If you do make a mistake, the best thing to do is get a wee bit of Wraithbone, pop it on the mistake, and then cover over with Griffhound Orange. We can fix it later on with the layer paints we're going to put on top. There's also a lot of tools around the model, so just make sure they're covered black as well. There's a pipe on the model's right arm, and I didn't want to give it hazard stripes, that would take too long. So all I did was paint the little bands across it black, and I painted the rest of it with a Yandin yellow contrast. I think it looks really cool. There's also a little screen on that arm, and I just painted that orc flesh. I took a big dollop out the pot, and just laid the dollop right on top of it. So you've probably noticed the model doesn't have a head. I painted that separately. I just got a pot of paint, and glued a nail on top of it, and stuck the head on the nail. It's not very graceful, but it works for me. A Yandin Yellow is the contrast paint that I used for it. Depending on when you're watching this, the new contrast range might be out, and I would probably pick one of the other yellows from that. With the Yandin Yellow, you really have to watch out for pools of paint, because if it pulls, it'll look a bit orangey and it'll look really unsightly, and since the helmet will be a focal point, you want it to look as good as it can. The next step is the face, and I must admit I didn't put much effort into this, most of it's covered, but with a few well-placed contrast paints you can make it look pretty good anyway. I used Gulam and Flesh all over the face, including the moustache. I found a little trick for the moustache. If you use Gulam and Flesh on it, and then you put Basilicanum Grey, then it looks kind of light browny and I don't have any other contrasts to match that, so it was a happy accident. So after I'd added those two colours, I painted the visor with Black Templar. I used two coats because one coat looks a bit blotchy sometimes. Staying with the Black Templar, paint the rubber tubing on the back of his head. 
Next we're on to the best bit of the whole paint job and that is making the orange pop. For the first layer I used Troll Slayer Orange. If there's any wide flat bits just get some thinned down Troll Slayer Orange and just paint it on, avoiding all the rivets. You can also edge highlight with Troll Slayer so just catch as many edges as you possibly can. If there's any flat bits just make sure that they don't look too dark if they're not meant to be in shadow. The more time you spend on this stage the better it'll look. The little circles on the arm are very easy to highlight, just paint the top half of it. Don't bother about blending or anything like that, if you just paint a little crescent on it it'll look absolutely great. That also goes for the knee and elbow pads, just paint the top half of it and just leave the underside dark and it'll create a wee bit of natural shadow. If there are any bits that are looking particularly splotchy from the contrast just paint Troll Slayer on top of it, maybe a couple of layers just to make it a nice even orange. Next up is Fire Dragon Bright and this is going to be an edge highlight only. The best way to do this is with thin paint and just try to catch as many edges as you can. I use the side of my brush when possible. You need to turn the model to get the best possible angle so that you can just slide your brush along the edge of it. It is a lot easier doing it that way than trying to rely on a steady hand and just using the tip of the brush, believe me. There's little tubes on his shoulders as well, so I just got some very thinned down fire dragon and just drew a line right across the middle of the tube. It looks a bit silly when the paint's wet, but when it's dried it blends in absolutely perfectly, so don't worry about it. Don't use thick paint because that will just dry really, really bright. The more edges you can catch at this stage, the better the model will look. With the little circles on his arms, all you're going to do is highlight the highlights, so we painted a little half circle with the Troll Slayer Orange. With the Fire Dragon Bright we're just going to paint an even smaller semicircle at the top of that. I took it one step further and it was probably totally unnecessary but for the very very sharpest edges I used Luganath Orange. If I'm being honest with myself I'm not sure it added very much. After that it's time to add lead belcher to all the metallics. So the big belt buckle, parts of the gun, all the tools around the belt and there's little rivets and dots all over the armour on the knee pads, on the elbow pads, on the shoulders, just try to get them all. I really have to say, after painting a box of something, normally I'm really tired of it and I want to move on to something new. Straight after I'd finished painting them, I ordered another box of them, so I'm going to try to do something else with vehicles for Necromunda as well. I'm really excited about it. The next step is to wash all your metallics with good old null oil. So the belt buckle, the gun, all the tools and the grenades on the back. I didn't bother washing the rivets because they're so small, I'm not going to highlight them either, I'm just going to leave them lead belcher. They look absolutely fine. Once the wash was dry, I took Stormhost Silver and highlighted all the top edges of all the metallic bits. I used very thin Finrisian Grey to highlight all the bluey grey cloth parts. I just tried to hit every high edge of the cloth and leave a wee bit of the darker Space Wolves Grey in the recesses. If you don't do this step, then the all over contrast can look a bit splotchy. Believe it or not, we're nearly there. I took Scrag Brown and added a little bit of white to it and then highlighted all the brown areas. So the toe caps of the shoes, all the pouches and the gloves as well. I took extra time for the strap across his chest and just highlighted it with the thinnest line highlight you could possibly imagine, just with the side of the brush. I could have left it off because contrast creates a nice natural leather look without doing anything else to it. You don't need to shade or highlight it, but I thought I'd just take that wee extra step just to make the model pop a wee bit more. Back to the helmet and I gave it a few thin coats of Uriel Yellow just to make it a lot more uniform and a lot brighter as well. After that I took some very thin Ushabti bone and just line highlighted the whole thing. So there's circular bits on the ears so I just did a little crescent on top of the circle. For the rim of the hat I just put an edge highlight along the front of it with the side of my brush yet again and just did that around the whole helmet. I always hate painting the Warhammer lights with the wires across them so I cheated a wee bit. I painted Stormhost Silver all over the bulb and then after that was dry I used Soulstone Blue and all you do with that is just get a big gob of it and just place it on the bit that you want to be kind of reflecty and look a bit like OSL almost and I just put it on that and then left it. It dried really nicely and I was happy with the effect. It saved a lot of mucking about. I took some Korax White and just painted little lines on his moustache. I want all these guys to be like old grizzled miners so most of them have got white beards and moustaches. I painted the whole bottom portion of it with Griffhound Orange again just so it would fit in when I place the head in the model. I'm not going to lie to you, basing is not my strong point. I am going to look at the basing on these guys at a later date, but for now all I did was use Astro Granite Texture Paint, put a black wash over it with Null Oil, and then dry brushed it with Dawnstone and Administratum Grey. Unfortunately I forgot to film most of that part so you'll just have to take my word for it. So there you go, a Necromunda gang in hardly any time at all. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're looking for something else to watch, I'd recommend this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.